Good evening, everybody. How are you doing tonight? I hope you're excited to be here. Y'all go ahead and stand with us. Let's worship the Lord tonight. Long years ago. Long years ago. and give him some praise tonight. Is he everything to you tonight? And did you come tonight to trade your sorrows and to say, yes, Lord, whatever he may ask? Come on and sing this with us. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my sorrows. Lord. 
sorrows and our sickness. Father, we can lay down everything that would hold us separate from you. And God, we thank you that tonight, whenever we could be any other place, that you've allowed us to come here. And Lord, there is no place that we would rather be. And tonight, would you just continue to ignite fires in your people? Lord, would you continue to set us ablaze for your kingdom and for your work that you've called us to do? Father, until all that we can do is sing hallelujah. Lord, show us your place. Show us your glory in this place tonight. In all things that we do, let us worship you in purity and in truth. In your name we pray. Amen. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. No place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be. No place I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain. I want more of you, God. I want more of you. So set a fire, so set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more. And Lord, there's no place, no place I would rather be. No place. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't yeah. 
there's hate that I can't control. I want more of you, God. Oh, lift up that praise. I want more. Lord, to set a fire, to set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God, to set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you. I want more of you, God. Oh, come on, lift your hands all over this sanctuary. Give him a praise. Come on, come on, come on. Thank him for what he's already done. Go ahead and praise him for what he's going to do tonight. Hallelujah. Open yourself up to him and say, Lord, I want more. Lord, I want more. Come on, you know he's already done a whole lot for you. He's already done a whole lot for you. Lord God, in these two weeks. And I'm telling you, there's more of God than we have not seen. And God is wanting to pour out upon His church. Glory to God. He's just looking for somebody who will surrender to Him. Praise God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, surrender to the Holy Spirit tonight. Thank you, Lord. My people, what I have begun in you, I will bring to completion. I, the Lord, have done a great work in you. Do not lay it aside. Do not lay it down, but let it run its course in you. I'm getting you ready for ministry. I'm getting you prepared for a battle. I'm getting you prepared for the war. But you are my people and I am your God. I have never let you down and I never will. But I am here tonight to, to do something for you that you have never seen before. Lift me up, lift me up and praise me, I say. And I will manifest my glory in your presence, saith the Lord. Oh, come on. Somebody give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. While you're standing with me, I want you to go with me very quickly to the Word of God. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 and 19. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 and 19. Glory to God. I want you to pay close attention to what these two verses are saying. Do not remember the former things. Look at your neighbor and say, don't remember the former things. Nor consider the things of old. Hallelujah. Verse 19. Get this. Behold. I like that word behold. Because that word behold means pay attention. I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Glory to God. Let's look again. Behold, I will do a new thing. I want to minister tonight on the subject. God wants to do a new thing in your life. God wants to do a new thing in your life. Look at your neighbor and tell him, God wants to do a new thing in your life. 
Now I ask them this question, will you allow him to? The Word of God. It's not a question of what he wants to do. The question is, are we willing to open up and allow him to do it? Amen. Father God, as we come before you tonight, we give you praise. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for the Spirit of God that we already feel in this place. Father, I thank you for your word that you've already spoken to this congregation. Lord, and I pray, Lord, that we open ourselves up, Lord, to what you want to do. Lord, not what we want to see out of this service, but Lord, help us to surrender our will and our way, God, and our vision to what you want to do in this place. Father, I know you're wanting to do something new in somebody's life tonight. Father, you're wanting to take every one of us, Lord, always to a new level. You're wanting to lift us up, dear Heavenly Father, and exalt us. Father, I pray tonight, God, that we would surrender ourselves, Lord, so you could do just that. And Lord, we will give you the praise, the glory, the honor for it all in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Amen and amen. Glory to God, you may be seated. Lord God, when we look here, we see in Isaiah's writing to the children of Israel, Lord God, it came at a bleak period in history. Amen. They are in captivity. Now think about this. They're in Babylonian captivity. Activity, glory to God. Oh, they have lost everything, and they thought that, that, that everything that they thought they would keep forever, glory to God, they have lost. And they are over in a foreign country, and they're homesick for a land, and the blessings of God, amen, that He had promised them. Glory to God, can you imagine being in captivity in a foreign land? Can you imagine losing everything that you have, glory to God? But then all of the sudden, in the middle of all of that you get a word from God that he's about to do a new thing I don't know about you but glory to God that just tells me that God knows our situation he knows where we are he knows what we're going through glory to God and there ain't no captive there's no enemy there's no devil there's no situation there is nothing that can stop God from doing whatever he wants to do in your life and in mine Praise God. There is no political group. There is no governmental group. There is not a Congress or a Senate that can stop God from moving the way God wants to move. Come on, somebody. I want to tell you they can try to, to shut every church down. They can try to shut every Christian up. But you hear this preacher tonight. God is going to have a remnant that's going to stand up, square its shoulders, and proclaim the Word of God. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Woo! I'm telling you right in the middle. I don't know who I'm talking to. Glory to God, you drug something in here behind you tonight. But God sent me in to tell you he's about to do something new in your life. You've let worry. You've let fear. You've let discouragement. You've let despondent, Lord God, you've let doubt creep in. But God said, now is a new time. Lord God, you need to lay that stuff aside and let God do something new in you. Praise God. And he told me, Lord God, you need to embrace this new thing. Well, how do I do that, Pastor? How do I embrace uh, the new thing that God wants to do in my life? Uh, there's three things I want to bring into you here and right quickly, and I'll get out of the way. First of all, if you're going to embrace this new thing, um, you've got to change your focus. Look at your neighbor tell them, you've got to change your focus. Glory to God. You see in the climate uh, that we're in right now, in the political climate uh, that we're in, it's easy to get our eyes off God. It's easy to look. Uh, you see in the, in the place that they was in, it's easy to get their eyes off God. They could have looked at their situation and said things ain't never going to get better. Things are, are only getting worse. Uh, and I've even heard some people say, uh, oh, glory to God, uh, in ne by next Wednesday, things are going to get worse. Uh, listen, I don't know if next Wednesday will get here. All I've got is right now. So I think what I need to do and what you need to do is just go ahead and praise God and let God be God in the very moment that we're in. Praise God. We've got to learn to change our focus. We've got to quit looking behind and start looking ahead. Praise God. You see, in verse 18, Isaiah told them, he said, forget the former things. 
Don't dwell on the past. You see, if you're continually looking behind you, you can't see where you're going. Glory to God. Remind me a little story. Glory to God, a guy had three young men. Praise God. He put three of them in a line. He said, and the first one who gets to me, Lord God, I'll take you to the mall and buy you the toy of your dreams. Lord God, he lined them up and it had snowed. The snow was about eight inches deep. Lord God, all three of them was there. And he said, go, Lord God. And the first one, he started looking at his feet. The next one to him started looking at the guy next to him. But this one over here, he kept his eyes on the finish line. Guess who finished, folks? I'm going to tell you, we got too many people who are looking at other people. We got too many people wishing for the past. Listen, I, I want to tell you, if you glamorize the past over the glorious future that God has for you, you are not going anywhere. I'm telling you, God is doing a new thing right here, right now. God wants to use anybody and everybody that will get their focus on him. Praise God. Quit looking behind you. You see, if you're ever going to move on to new things in Christ, you've got to learn that you can't depend upon past victories to sustain you. I thank God for what he's brought me through. Hallelujah. Thank him for what he's brought you through. But you can't live on leftovers all your life. Who am I talking to? Lord God, you all you've done. That's all you ever talk about is what God used to do. We get in our church with Brother Mike, and that's all we seem to want to talk about, what God used to do, how things used to be, the revivals of yesterday. Lord God, thank God for what God has done. But can I tell you, God is a right now God. You gotta forget the former things. You see, the children of Israel had many victories in their past, uh, leaving Egypt, uh, conquering the land of Canaan, fighting them. Uh, Lord God, uh, oh hallelujah, surviving a split in their own country. But now, glory to God, uh, they are in captivity. All of their previous victories were doing them nothing to set them free. Uh, they needed a new work, a new miracle, and a new victory. Praise God. Thank God for the healing I got last week. Thank God for the touch you got yesterday. But today's a new day. Oh, to God. And I'm glad that the touch I got yesterday, the touch I got last week, I'm glad, hallelujah, for it. But I'm telling you, I'm glad the same God who touched me then is the same God who will touch you now. Glory to God. You see, the question isn't what God has done. The question's got to be, what is God doing in my life right now? What is it that you want Him to do in your life right now? You can't depend on past victories. Lord, you can't allow your past failures to possess you either. Oh, who am I talking to? Glory to God. The devil comes along. And he's beat some of y'all, he's beat some of y'all's brains plumb out. I'm one of them. Come on now. Don't you think he don't torture me? Glory to God. Every message I preach, every time I get up in the pulpit and get out of that pulpit, every time I'm going home between here and Matt Mimble, Lord God, uh, he's sitting over there in that passenger seat saying, you could have said this and you could have done that. and you, Oh, you made that one mad. You upset this one. and you, Oh, glory to God. They're, they're going to come along and they're going to fire you. and They're not going to, oh, you're going to run everybody off. Uh, ain't nobody going to be there no more. I'm telling you sometimes, uh, yeah, oh, glory to God, uh, that devil wants to tell you you're a failure. But you hear me, glory to God. You are not a failure, praise God. You are not the sum total, praise God, of your failures. You're a child of God. Amen. God said, You're my child. I'm going to pick you up and use you as such. You got to quit allowing your past failures to possess you. Do not dwell on the past. You see, the children of Israel had failed God miserably. Every time he blessed them with good things, they returned to evil things. God gave them the temple. Oh, they gave him idol worship. God gave them the truth. 
they lived and proclaimed a lie. God gave them his commands. They lived like they were suggestions. God gave them wealth. They used it to abuse the poor. God gave them himself. They gave him nothing except rejection. You see, the children of Israel didn't deserve to receive anything from God, yet he still loved them and he earnestly wanted to help them change. I've come along to tell somebody tonight, don't listen to the lie of the devil, not one more time. Lord God, that God don't love you. God loves you in this place and he's ready to lift you back up and put your robe back on you and put the ring back on your finger and the shoes back on your feet. Woo! Not only can you not live on yesterday's victories, not only do you need, not need to let the past failures get you, but you can't live on yesterday's faith. You see, the children of Israel had experienced great spiritual blessing throughout their history. From the first Passover to the crossing of the Red Sea to the conquering of the land of Canaan to the building of the temple, the children of Israel had seen the hand of God at work and through their lives. Yet their faith in what God had done was nothing. Couldn't do him any good to deliver them from their present circumstance. Yeah. We've seen Pharaoh drowned. Whoo, that was a great moment. We watched Jericho's walls fall. Whoo, that was a great moment. We watched tribe after tribe of whatever it you wanted to call it in the land of Canaan that we conquered. That was a great moment. But look at where we are now. And see, there's some of you sitting in here. You've had victory. You know what it is to taste victory in Jesus. But there's somebody sitting in here right now. I'm going to prophesy to you. There's somebody sitting in here right now. Glory to God. You're sitting in a dilemma. You're sitting in a struggle. But God sent me in here to tell you, you can't live off the faith you had that brought you through that other. You've got to have faith right now. You've got to have now faith. Glory to God that says, the same God that brought me through then, he'll bring me through right now. Glory to God. He ain't changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Glory to God. He's the Lord our God who changes not. Praise God. His promises are yea and amen. And I believe what he says. And I know, glory to God, he's going to bring me through. Praise God. You see, they need a new faith, a new vision for what God could do. They needed a, a new portion of a faith that had brought them past all the victories from before. Glory to God. We need a new victory. we got to change our focus. But not only do we need to change our focus, but number two, we need to clarify our focus. We need to clarify our focus. What are you talking about, Pastor? I'm telling you that we need to discover what God wants for us. We need to discover what God wants for us. Look at what he said. Forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. What does that word perceive mean? It means to know by seeing. It means to care. It means to recognize all recognition. It means it means acknowledgement. It means to be aware of. It means to have understanding. What do you see when you view life? Do you see possibilities or problems? Notice what God said. I'm making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. You see, what some people saw when I read that, all they saw was desert and wasteland. That's all they heard. That's all they heard, Brother Donnell. They're shaking their head and tears are flowing down their face. I know exactly what it is to be in a wasteland. 
I know what it is to be in the desert. I'm there now. But you didn't hear. You, you got to perceive what's being said there. You, you may not be able to change that situation from a desert in a wasteland. You may not have the power to change that situation. But the one who spoke this thing into existence, the one, glory to God, in Genesis chapter 1, who said, I spoke over this thing that was null and void. I spoke over it, glory to God. And light sprung up, land sprung up. I separated the day from the night. I separated the land from the sea. I spoke and I made mankind. I'm telling you, you may not be able to change your situation, but God can. Oh, all you may see is desert and wasteland. But listen what he said. God said, I don't see a wasteland. I don't see a desert. I see a way. And I see streams. I see a way. Look at your neighbor and say, there's a way. You know what streams are? Streams, glory to God, are refreshing. How I many you know that the Lord said he'll make a way where there seems to be no way? Come on now. Somebody come in here tonight. Oh, to God, you drug yourself in here, but you are here. Oh, to God, I'm telling you, you may feel like you're in that desert. You may feel like you're in that wasteland. But I'm telling you, God brought you in here tonight to show you he is the way, the truth, and the life. Praise God. He's making a way. He's going to open a door. He's going to let streams be flooded upon you. Praise God. And the resources you need is coming your way. Somebody give the Lord some praise in this house. You got to clarify your focus. You see, the children of Israel, they had a choice. They could view. They could view their past and the problems of their present. Or they could focus on God and see what he wanted to do in their lives. It's way versus desert. It's streams versus wasteland. Glory to God. How are you looking at things tonight? How are you seeing things tonight? Oh, glory to God. My wife, praise God, before I left, she's been listening to a lot of these People on Facebook and other news outlets trying to figure out what's going on in the next few days. And Lord of God, and she was playing one, and it was this guy who was, I don't know, he had about 18 points of what he feels like is going on. And I'm telling you what, when you listen to a few of these people, Lord of God, and you look around and see what's going on, oh my Lord, it'll just take your spirit and just push it in the dirt. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, folks, our perspective has got to get clear. Amen. I don't, I could care less what Biden wants to do. I could care less what the Senate wants to do. I could care less what the whole, oh, come on, what the Congress wants to do. My care is what does God want to do. Come on now. Praise God. We are, we are people of the kingdom. Glory to God. Our citizenship is in heaven. Yes, we may be in the United States, but we first and foremost are citizens of heaven and we have got to get our minds clear of this junk down here and our perspective back on him praise God you see in order to discover what God wants for you you got to first see yourself as God sees you. No, you didn't hear me. You've got to first see yourself. Well, how do I do that, Pastor? How do I see myself as God sees me? Romans chapter 1, 8 and verse 1 and 2 says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation. I preach, Sister Dean, 
I preach and other pastors preach every Sunday morning and Sunday night to folks sitting in our pews who are condemned. And it's not that they're condemned, Brother Richard, by God. They're condemned by their self. They condemn themselves to a life of sadness. They condemn themselves to a life of misery. They condemn themselves to a life of saying, I'm not worthy of being blessed by God. I've done too much. I've gone too far. Oh, I'm telling you what, folks. I hear the word of God say, Paul sat there and said, Now there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. I'm telling you, folks, you got to see yourself as free in the house of God. How does God see you? He said there's no, no, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because through Christ Jesus the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. Colossians 1, 21, 22 says, And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now... He has reconciled. Woo! Oh, in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy, blameless, and above reproach in his sight. I'm telling you, <laughs> you may feel like your past has made your life a life of wasteland, but in God, your life can become a stream of life. I'm telling you, you're a child. Look at somebody and say, I'm a child of God, and I know that I am. Praise God. You've got to see yourself as God sees you. Secondly, you've got to see your possibilities as God sees them. <laughs> I may even know that God is able to transform a desert area in your life in the fields of blessings and abundance. God can take a dried up useless life and transform it into a life of purpose and grace. 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into His likeness with ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is this spirit praise God I'm telling you you got to see your possibilities glory to God if all we ever do is focus on ourselves, then no wonder we're so tore up messed up dysfunctional all the time glory to God but you got to see things from God's eye view you see, we're seeing everything from down here. And with this, we've got limited view. But you see, God sees everything from up here. See, we can't see the forest for the trees. But God sees past the forest. God sees... Oh. God sees a bigger picture for your life. Even though he don't give you all of that picture all at once because it would choke us to death. We can't handle it. Glory to God, but I'm telling you, God knows what he's doing, and, and God knows what he sees in you. Oh, I've heard some people say, I can't believe the Lord saved me. Really? Glory to God. That's an awful low opinion of yourself. Listen, every one of us in here shouldn't be saved. If you really want to get technical about it, every single one of us in here ought to be on our way to hell. Amen. Praise God. Ain't a one of us in here deserve salvation. Glory to God. Oh, but I'm telling you, amen, he looked down upon us. He said, I'm, I know what I want to do with you. Praise God, I know what your potential is. Uh, praise God. Some of you may not even know what your calling is just yet, but I'm telling you, God knows what it is, what it is, and he's working on you, and he's molding you as the potter does the clay. He's getting you ready, praise God, for something great in your life. got to clarify you got to change your focus you got to clarify your focus and then last of all you got to commit yourself to God's plan look at your neighbor and tell them God's got a plan for you God's got a plan for you hey man you see God had already set in motion the events and people 
who would lead Israel out of captivity and back into the land of blessing. But it was still up to them to decide if they wanted what God had to offer. You see, if they refused God's plan, if they refused to follow where God was leading them, then they would be doomed to remain in captivity. Oh, glory to God. I'm telling you, folks, I believe that the reason why that a lot of us don't get the blessing that God wants us to have is because we keep trying to tell God how to do it. We keep trying to tell God how we want things to be. Amen. When all he's looking for is for us to surrender to him and his way. How many of you know that he knows a whole lot better about us than we know about ourselves? Amen. Lord God, we've got to come to that place so we commit ourselves to the plan of God. Listen, I'm doing a new thing, he said. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the desert and streams in a wasteland. You see, God has already set in motion a new direction and a new purpose for your life. The, the question is, will you Follow him. Will you throw caution to the wind? Will you risk, uh, glory to God, your faith and step out on nothing if it takes it and follow him where he leads you? Amen. You see, a lot of us don't want to step out of our comfort zone. Ooh. I think I will. A lot of us don't want to step out of our comfort zone. We've got so comfortable being where we are. We like our soft, cushy place. Glory to God. We've got our name on the side of the pew. We've got our backside imprint in the pad. And we just dare the Holy Ghost to move us if he can. Come on now. Oh, but we want God to bless us. But we want, we want him to do it while we're wearing our pajama bottoms and our soft, comfortable shoes and my blanket and my pillow. Lord, just, you know, don't ask me to do something radical. Don't, don't ask me to do something that's out of the ordinary. Don't, don't ask me to get out of the boat. Don't, don't ask me to walk on water. Don't, don't ask me to go over and lay hands on somebody and, and see the miracles and signs and wonders flow. Don't ask me to go do anything where the gifts of the Spirit flow through me. All I want to do, Lord, is be a good Christian that comes into the house of God, sits in my place, sings my songs, hears the man of God, woman preach and then go home and do what I want to do the rest of the time it is bless God we want God to do something for us but he's not going to do anything for us till we are ready to do something for him I will do a new thing. I will do a new thing. But you see, we've got commitment issues. Look around you folks. We live in a nation of commitment issues. People can't commit to marriages. Some parents can't even commit to their children. Children can't even commit to their parents. Some, some children can't even commit to school. Lord God, some can't even commit to colleges. Some of them can't commit to a job. They'll last about a day and then they'll, they'll leave because it just wasn't what they thought it was. Lord God, we're not willing to sacrifice anymore. And, amen. Oh, Lord God, give a little bit of ourself. Give a little bit of sweat, equity into getting something. We want everything give to us, but we don't want to give in return. God says, if you want what I got, if you want the plan that I have for you, as Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, for I know, God says, I know. Well, God, I don't know. It don't matter whether you know. It don't matter whether I know. 
he knows. Because, you know, it, 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 the thing is, I, I thought about it like this. I've thought about that scripture a lot. If we ever got to the place that we knowed, we'd mess it up. Or if we, or if we come to the place that, that we knowed, we'd blab it out and the devil would mess it up for us. So God says, listen, I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Says the Lord. He said, but I'm going to go ahead and give you a little sneak peek on what they are. He says, they're thoughts of peace. How many of you can use some peace in here tonight? He said, glory to God, I'm going to think thoughts of peace toward you. Not evil. To give you, oh hallelujah, an expected in no glory. <laughs> what that says, God says, I've got a future prepared for you, 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 you. And I know what I want to do in it. Glory to God. And I, want what I, I know what I want you to do in it. Glory to God. But what you got to do is you got to have enough faith to trust me with your future. You got to have enough faith to trust me with the plans that I have for you. Glory to God. Oh, glory. You've never been there before. You've never done this before. But it's going to be all right. Just go ahead and step out. Because listen, now faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. God is trying to step them folks out on faith. Glory to God for the plan he has for you. I'll do a new thing. Come on. Glory to God. I'm done. We gotta commit ourselves. Psalms 128 1 says, Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. Psalms 37 and 5 says, Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Proverbs 14 and 12, there's a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Folks, I want to tell you tonight, God says, I want to do a new thing in you as you're standing with me tonight.